What drives a person to commit a heist worth millions of dollars? Was it greed, desperation, or something else entirely? These are just some of the questions that come to mind when we think about the hotel heist in New York City, where a man managed to steal a whopping $10 million in cash and jewelry. How did he do it? What was his motive? And perhaps most importantly, will he ever be caught? In this video, we'll delve into the details of this daring crime and try to unravel the mystery behind one of the biggest heists in recent history. Step back in time to 1972 Manhattan, where the city was truly a tale of two cities. Downtown, crime and poverty were rampant, while uptown, the wealthy hobnobbed with celebrities at luxurious hotels, flaunting their opulence for all to see. The line between the haves and the have-nots was starkly drawn, leading to an increase in violent crime. But amidst the darkness, a beacon of glamour shone brightly. The infamous Pierre Hotel was a favorite haunt of celebrities, where renting an apartment cost a staggering $34,000 a month. Luxury was the name of the game, and the Pierre Hotel played it to perfection. Picture this. On any given night, Manhattan's wealthiest elite gather at the luxurious Pierre Hotel, making for a tempting target for ambitious thieves. But Pierre isn't taking any chances. With more security measures in place than almost any other hotel in New York, including a vault that could give Fort Knox a run for its money, this hotel is a fortress. Even experienced thieves are no match for Pierre's security guards and 300-pound, 12-gauge steel vault. But there's one criminal mastermind who thinks he's got what it takes to pull off the heist of a lifetime. Meet Bobby Comfort a fearless, lifelong criminal with a genius-level IQ. At just 13 years old, he was already behind bars. Now he's dreaming up a plan to outsmart Pierre's security team. The only thing standing in his way, getting out of jail first. So get ready for a high-stakes adrenaline-fueled ride through the seedy underbelly of 1970s New York City and this true crime thriller. Bobby Comfort, the mastermind of heists with a history of negotiating plea deals and knocking down sentences. But when he's locked up, he doesn't waste time. Instead, he spends two years planning his next big score from behind bars. He knows the Pierre Hotel is too big a job to tackle alone, so he starts searching for the perfect partner in crime upon his release. Enter Sammy Nalo, also known as the Tool Man. Sammy's known for his ability to break into anything with just his trusty hammers and chisels. Bobby persuades Sammy to team up and go after the ultimate target, the hotel's safe deposit boxes brimming with untold riches. With their sights set on the Pierre, these two seasoned thieves will stop at nothing to pull off the biggest heist of their careers. 18 days before the big heist, Bobby recruits three outsiders to join his team, City, Country, and Duck. With Sammy in need of an expert to bust open the safe deposit boxes, Bobby brings in City, a trusted associate from past jobs. For backup, Bobby hires Doc, a friend from out of town but it's Country who catches Bobby's eye at a card game. Despite his appearance, Country has a reckless streak and a willingness to take big risks, just what the team needs for the daring heist ahead. Meanwhile, Sammy rents an apartment just a mile southwest of Pierre, laying the groundwork for the perfect plan. With the crew assembled and the location scouted, they're ready to execute the heist of a lifetime. Two weeks before the heist, Bobby Comfort checks into the hotel, scouting the perfect opportunity. He notices that the night auditor opens the vault at 3.40 in the morning, leaving the door open until 4.30 as he checks the cash and refills the money. It's the perfect time to strike. With a date set, the crew purchases supplies, handcuffs, gloves, and tape, and sets out to find disguises. Three days before the big day, Bobby breaks the news. They're going to rob the Pierre Hotel the day after New Year's. The team arrives on the day of the heist, ready to execute the perfect plan. With their hideout secured and their gear at the ready, they move in for the score of a lifetime. On the night of the heist, the scene was set at Sammy's apartment, with Sammy and Country donning their wigs while Doc opted to go without a disguise, as he had no plans to stay in New York City. As the adrenaline started pumping, the trio made their way to the Target building and approached the front door where the security guard met them. With their reservation under the name of Dr. Foster, the plan was set in motion, and as they stepped in, Bobby and Sammy emerged from their hiding spot behind the planters, guns blazing. The heist was officially on, and with the guard taken down, they had full control of the front door. Like a team of expertly trained operatives, they sprang into action, 
with Country stationed at the 61st Street exit and Doc blending in with the hostages. Meanwhile, Sammy and Sidney took on the safe deposit boxes, armed with only a hammer and chisel. With Bobby at the helm, they quickly came up with a strategy to target the wealthiest box holders first, and they wasted no time in executing their plan. Despite the high-stakes situation, Comfort calmly reassured the hostages that no harm would come to them, as long as they remained calm. The heist may have been risky, but these seasoned criminals knew exactly what they were doing, and they were determined to make it out with the biggest haul of their careers. The heist was on and they were hitting every jackpot in sight. The first target was a no-brainer, and it paid off big time. But they didn't stop there. Next up was the Red Sox owner's box, loaded with cash and jewels worth a fortune. And then, they hit the mother load. A Greek shipping heiress's box contained a necklace worth a whopping $400,000. But that was just the beginning. The real treasure was yet to come. Inside Gabrielle Lagerwall's box was a single necklace worth over $5 million in today's money. The temptation was overwhelming, but as the hours ticked by, Comfort began to feel the weight of his greed. He wanted to cut and run, but Sammy urged him to stay. Bobby was always thinking about the clock. Every second counted, and the longer they stayed, the greater their chances of getting caught. But Sammy had found gold, and he wasn't ready to give up just yet. As they pushed the two-hour mark, things started to get dicey. The hostages were handcuffed and terrified, but the crew couldn't afford to let them go. They had to keep moving, keep pushing, and keep searching for more treasure. Finally, the time had come. They had to get out of there, and fast. The first employees stumbled across the hostages and the cops were hot on their trail. But when the police arrived, there was nothing to be found. No pictures, no fingerprints, no witnesses willing to talk. It was a clean getaway, and they had pulled off the perfect heist. As the police trail Sammy's hideout, the crooks shift their focus towards their massive loot. Bobby spills the beans, almost 900,000 in cash, and a whopping $10 million in jewels. In today's terms, that's over $75 million. The cash is a no-brainer to divide, but the diamonds and jewels pose a bigger challenge. The team decides to hold on to them for a year, with Sidney and Sammy as the keepers while everyone else gets their share. The plan seems foolproof, but the cops are hot on their heels. They go deep undercover, relying on their sources to uncover any leads. They're counting on someone from the crew to slip up, and it doesn't take long. Just three days after the heist, Mello calls Bobby in desperation, offering big bucks to alter the plan. Meanwhile, Sammy's gambling debts have spiraled out of control, and he's desperate to offload the jewels to the highest bidder. Will the crew come out on top, or will their greed be their undoing? Stay tuned to find out. As Sammy sets out to sell these precious jewels, he knows that he must be careful and avoid drawing attention to himself. His first potential buyer is Bobby an FBI informant who agrees to help him, but warns him that it's too soon to show their faces. To proceed with the sale, Bobby suggests that they hire a front man to represent them. He brings in his friend Dom Polino, who agrees to meet with an independent jewelry appraiser. Bobby and Dom Polino return to New York City, where they check into the Royal Manhattan Hotel. Sammy arrives with a bag of diamonds worth over a quarter of a million dollars for the sale. Dom Polino leaves the hotel room and pays the bill, keeping the receipt in his pocket. He then takes a taxi across to the Summit Hotel, where the buyer is waiting for him. Once he arrives, Don Paulino lays out Sammy's jewels on a coffee table. As he is about to make the sale, he suddenly finds himself surrounded by FBI agents. The tension is palpable, as everyone realizes the danger they're in. The stakes are high, and the consequences of their actions could be severe. In this high-stakes drama, the characters are constantly on edge trying to navigate the complex world of diamond sales and FBI investigations. With each new twist and turn, the tension mounts, leaving the viewers on the edge of their seats. As the story unfolds, we see the characters struggle with their own morality as they weigh the risks and rewards of their actions. In the end, the fate of the diamonds and the characters themselves hangs in the balance, leaving us wondering what will happen next. After conducting a thorough search of Bobby's hotel room, the police officers frisk him, discover a bill from the prestigious Royal Manhattan Hotel. Little did Bobby know that his stay at the hotel would lead to his arrest. As he anxiously awaits the return of Dom, Bobby assumes that the upcoming sale would be quick and easy. However, his world turns upside down 
when someone forcefully barges into his room, and Bobby finds himself in handcuffs. The NYPD and FBI are quick to make an announcement, claiming that they've captured all four men responsible for the Pierre Hotel heist. But the truth is that they've only managed to apprehend one person, Bobby Comfort. The Pierre Hotel heist was a perfectly executed crime, leaving no prints, physical evidence, or information behind. However, the authorities had one lead, Bobby Comfort. After his arrest, an informant reveals to the FBI that Bobby had a partner named Sammy. It appears that Bobby's greed got the better of him, leading to his downfall. The authorities are now in the hunt for Sammy, hoping that he will lead them to the other two suspects still at large. In the narrative, the Arab Nailer is located by the authorities, and through sheer coincidence, they manage to catch Sammy Nailer red-handed as he is leaving the building with a garbage bag full of incriminating evidence, such as the hammer and chisel. Sammy had been implicated in the theft of diamonds and had intended to betray his accomplices by keeping a portion of the loot for himself. This was a despicable act, but neither he nor Bobby, his partner in crime, disclosed the identities of the city, country, or dock where the crime had been committed. Despite this, Bobby Comfort was never apprehended again after his release from prison, while Sammy Naylor continued to commit further robberies while on parole. In one instance, he even took 17 hostages at a jewelry store. As a result, Sammy's actions brought him into conflict with the criminal underworld. On a fateful day in history, October 25, 1988, the notorious Sammy Nalo met his tragic end at the hands of members of the notorious Lucchese crime family. Nalo was known to be a chronic smoker. Despite his relatively young age of 53, he succumbed to the deadly effects of lung cancer. But Nalo's death was not the only significant event that occurred in 1988. In that same year, the Pierre Hotel in New York City became the target of a daring heist, one that would go down in history as one of the most successful hotel robberies ever recorded. Although only $1 million in jewelry was ever recovered from the incident, the question of what happened to the other $9 million remains shrouded in mystery. Despite the passing of several decades, the Pierre Hotel remains one of the most prestigious and expensive hotels in New York City. Its luxurious amenities and opulent surroundings continue to attract discerning travelers from around the world. And yet, the hotel's history is forever tied to this infamous heist that took place within its walls. Indeed, the Guinness Book of World Records still recognizes the Pierre Hotel robbery as the most successful hotel heist of all time. Its inclusion in this esteemed publication cements its place in history as one of the greatest heists ever executed. The legacy of the Pierre Hotel heist continues to captivate the public imagination, and its notoriety is likely to endure for many years to come. The New York City Hotel heist was a brazen and sophisticated crime that left many people in awe of the perpetrator's skills and audacity. As we reflect on this incredible heist, we're left to wonder what motivates people to engage in such criminal activities and what measures can be taken to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. Regardless of the outcome, the story of the New York City hotel heist will undoubtedly remain an intriguing and captivating tale of daring and intrigue for years to come. With that said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, press the bell icon so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.